Ezekiel chapter 37. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which is full of bones, the rapture. God displays Ezekiel where he was to another place by the spirit. Magicians try to copy that. Here I am, there I am. Watch this person. Here they are, there they are. But they gotta do it with trickery. God does it through the spirit. And cause me to pass by them round about. The bones. The all kinds of bones where where he's standing. And behold, there were very many bones in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. Deaf, dead, no life. Drier the bone, the deader the body. He said unto me, Son of man, what can these bones, Son of man, can these bones live? You ever wonder how God just spoke to them? He says, God said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? How, how, did, how did God speak to him? In his ear? What did it sound like? What did it sound like when God spoke from heaven, this is my beloved son? What is the holy of holy God? What it, does his voice sound like? Ever wonder? You know, when we hear our name at the rapture, it's going to be a none like ever if we ever heard our name. And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. I don't know. And he said unto me, prophecy upon these bones. And say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Ezekiel's got a great commission, doesn't he? He's preaching the mount the valleys, preaching the mountains, he preaches to trees, now he's preaching to a bunch of bones. He can't touch them. In the law he would be unclean. Say unto them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. They're bones. Thus saith the Lord God, unto thee, unto these bones, behold, I will cause. There's a prophecy. What's prophecy mean? I will cause. It's going to happen. It's future. You just saw the definition of prophecy in your Bible. I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. I will lay sinews upon you. That's your muscles and attaches your muscles. And I will bring up flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and ye shall live. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. That's a great unknown Lord. Here I am a dead pile of bones. God gives me life and I shall know. You know if I were to die or the rapture happens, you know I am going to know the Lord. I believe by faith. I've never seen the Lord. Well, that day when he calls me, I am going to know the Lord. So this is a good, I, 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 you shall know I am the Lord. Life from the dead. So I prophesied as I was commanded. Did exactly what God told him to do. And as I prophesied. There was a noise, and a bone, and, and behold, a shaking. What was the shaking? The bones, the ground, but there was a shaking. And the bones came together, bone to his bone, the proper place. You know that song, the shin bones connected to whatever the bone, this bone's connected to that bone. Comes right out of Ezekiel 37 7. You didn't know that, did you? All these bones found their proper spot and came together. No deformity. When I behold, or beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came upon it. That must have been an icky, creepy kind of thing. First, Ezekiel sees a skeleton and whoop, there's globs of muscles and in gross fatness and then flesh in reverse 
and the skin covered them above. So you got to see their guts. He got to see their vital organs. But there was no breath in them. When you ain't got no breath, you ain't got no life. So what's it record in Genesis 2 with Adam? It said God breathed into him and he became a living soul. Then said he unto me, God, prophesy unto the wind. Prophesy, son of man. Say it to the wind. Isn't it remarkable when Jesus tells Nicodemus, ye must be born again? He speaks about the spirit as the wind. Did you get the correlation between Ezekiel 37 and John chapter 3? Nicodemus didn't. Thus say the Lord God, come thou, the, come thou, I think that's the, the Bible is old. Four winds, O breath, and breathe upon the slain. Uh-oh, they were killed. And they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me. No programs, no his own ideas. He did what God told him to do, and the breath came into them, and they lived. Night of the living dead. And stood up, you know, the night of the living dead, you got the goat, the guts, the goo, and the organs sticking out. Not in the Bible. And they stood up upon their feet, exceedingly great army. A lot of men, a lot of bones. And they knew exactly where to go and how to go. And this is copied in Greek mythology with uh, Jason as Argonaut. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones, we got our own interpretation of the Bible, are the whole house of Israel. There you go. Clear? Israel's dead. They're going to live again. Behold, they say, Our bones are dry. We have no life. And our hope is lost. We are cut off. From our parts, our places, our city, our land, not, not heaven. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, my, O oh my people, Israel, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your grave and bring you into the land of Israel. Not New Jerusalem, not heaven. You know, it's funny when the Lord Jesus Christ died, the graves were opened up. And the Old Testament saints were walking around for, it looks like it could have been the full 40 days that Jesus was around until he was ascended. Ye shall know that I am the Lord. When I had opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your grave. Now, what's John 11? When Jesus told Lazarus to come out of that grave, it's a preview of Ezekiel 37. When those, when they're carrying that that little, that, well, I don't know, be little, but that that son of that woman down the street, a nail, and he stops the procession and rises that child up from the grave. What is that? That's a preview of Ezekiel 37. You think Jesus, you know, I'll just take a dead body, I'll just raise it. There is a purpose. It is found in the scriptures. Resurrection was nothing new. Brought you up out of your grave. And shall be and shall put my spirit in you. Not a pond. The old testament was a pond. Now it's in. Ye shall live, and I shall place you in your own heaven. Nope. Land. What is that land in eternity? It's the new earth. New Jerusalem is the Christian. The new earth is the Jew. The new heavens are Gentiles. You are to divide it.
So imagine someone taking what God has said is their land. Then shall ye know that I am the Lord, have spoken it, and performed it, saith the Lord God. You know how Israel is going to know it one day? They're going to be in that land. And no one else is going to be in that land. And the Lord Jesus Christ will be seated as the king of Jerusalem. As David the prince. And they'll say, ah, there's the Messiah. There's the Lord Jesus Christ. The son of God. The ones that our fathers killed. The ones that our fathers have rejected. Who are burning in hell. We're looking at the people who have done right by the law. Who have done what God told them to do. We're not looking at the ones that rejected. Those that rejected what God's commandment and God's law and God's telling. Will burn in hell. And will not be resurrected. The word of the Lord came unto me saying. Moreover. Now this is the proof text of the Mormon, the Mormon, I mean the Mormon church, who say they are of Ephraim. I think it's Hosea. Read what Hosea, I think it's Hosea has to say about Ephraim. He's joined the idols. Leave him alone. More thou son of man, take thee one step, and write upon it for Judah, and for the children of Israel, his companion. Then take another stick, and write upon it for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel, his companion. Joshua 18.5, I got to know here. Ephraim has been separated from Israel. He's the second stick. The children of Joseph will be returned, joined to the nation of Israel, but they are separate right now. And when you read the 144,000, Joseph is mentioned as, as a tribe. He hasn't been mentioned as a tribe since he had his two boys, Manasseh and Ephraim. Levi is mentioned as a tribe. He has not been an official tribe of God. He's been the priest, and that's we Dan and Ephraim. You have to check about Ephraim. I think they're left out in the, in the tribulation of the 144,000. You got to check that. And join them one to another into one stick. Make them one. And graft them together. And they shall become one in thy hand. In Ezekiel's hand. And when the children of thy people shall speak unto thee, saying, Wilt thou not show us what thou meanest by these? What are you taking these two sticks and writing their names on it? Say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim, and the tribes of Israel his fellows, and will put them with him, even with the stick of Judah, and make them one stick. And they shall be one in my hand. One day God's going to join Israel and Judah back, to, back together. And they're never going to split again. As they did in the time of Rehoboam. They're still split. So this hasn't happened yet. The Jews don't even know what tribes they are of. The only Jew that knows that today is the Lord Jesus Christ. Recorded in Matthew. Recorded in Luke. And the sticks, whereof thou writest, shall be in thy hand before their eyes. You know where Israel is now when Ezekiel is speaking to them? They're gone. They've already been taken captive. Judah has been sacked at least once, maybe twice. Maybe even the third time. There is no joining of the nations when he speaks this. And the sticks wherein thou writest shall be in thy hand before their eyes. And say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen, whither they have be gone, and will gather them on every side and bring them into their own land. I will make them one nation in the land of the mountains of Israel. Oh, there's those mountains. And one king shall be king to them. The Lord Jesus Christ. 
one king. And they shall be no more two nations as they are presently, as they are in Ezekiel's time. Neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms any more at all. So you know how you know God's going to be God one day when he joins Israel to be one again. You remember in Rehoboam's time, they split. Ten split and, and two split. Neither shall they defile themselves any more with their idols. Idolatry will be gone. Nor with their detestable things. Nor with any of their transgressions. Israel shall be made clean. But I will save them out of all their dwelling places where they have sinned and will cleanse them. So shall they be my people and I will be their God. Now you cannot say that has happened between Nehemiah and today. So you can't say God is all finished with the Jews after reading what we just read. In order to read this today that God's all finished with those Jews, they got to know who they are what they are, where they are, and God's going to say, I'm completely done with you. It's not your land no more. Impossible. What we're reading now is prophetic. It has not even happened yet. The only time they're going to know who they are, the next time they're going to find that out, is by the 144,000. They know what tribes they are of. They can guess. Their, pedig their pedigree is hidden by God. And David, my servant, shall be king over them. They shall have one shepherd. They shall also walk in my judgments, the law is coming back, and observe my statutes, the law is coming back, and do them. That's all in the millennium. David will be the prince. David will be the king under the Lord Jesus Christ, the King of Kings. You're going to see the second resurrection or the second coming of David. How's that? You're going to see the second coming of all the apostles. The second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. You're going to have the second coming of Stiley Hayward. I'm coming back one day on horseback behind the Lord Jesus Christ. Wouldn't it be interesting if the Lord, let's say the Lord came tonight. Seven years. Those people in Daytona that don't like me are going to be happy. I don't come back Saturdays and all that. In seven years, they're going to see me again. With the one I've been preaching about. As they try to hide their gods away from the God of all gods, the Lord Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. They won't be waiting for Santa Claus. You'll be hiding from Jesus Christ. And they shall dwell in the land. Got it? Land, 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 land. So what do people say as, as a part of a cuss? My lands? There is somebody say that? A lot of women used to say that like when I grew up as, as a boy. You do something wrong. My lands, little child, what are you doing? That I have given unto Jacob my servant. Did you get that? You know who Jacob's father was? Ishmael. Nope. Who was Jacob's father? Isaac. No Ishmael at all. Wherein your fathers have dwelt. Where did Abraham dwell? He dwelt in the land of Canaan. And they shall dwell therein. Even they, the Jews, and their children, and their children's children, forever. Did you get that? How long forever? According to some churches, forever has ended in A.D. Pick any year that they say. Je Jehovah Witnesses say they're no longer, God is no longer with the Jew. Why? Because they be claimed to be Jehovah's Witnesses. Do you know who the Jehovah Witnesses are? The 144,000? Too bad they got over a billion people now. They passed the 144,000. Those Jehovah Witnesses take the blessing off the Jews and put it on them. They say God's all finished with the Jew. I wonder if they have any Jewish people in their congregation. 
They used to say colored people were of the of the devil. Now they changed that. Come down to Daytona Beach and see it. Let's go read their old rhymes, what they say about the colored people, and then come down to Daytona Beach and watch how many colored people come out of their organization. They haven't studied their, their history, have they? The Catholic Church claims we're going to bring in the kingdom that the Jews couldn't do. And we're over there, and this is the time of year that we're going to show you where Jesus was born. We're going to show you where Jesus died. In the city, Hebrews said not. You go over there right now, the Holy Tour and all that, and all that other nonsense in Jerusalem today, a Roman Catholic will be one of the ones that will show you all the relics and stuff like that. Or I will make a uh, children's children forever, and my servant David shall be their prince forever under the Lord Jesus Christ. Great, 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 Grandpa David becomes a son to the Lord Jesus Christ. Explain that one. More, I will make a covenant of peace with them. Not the UN peace. It shall be an everlasting covenant with them. I will place them and multiply them. And will set my sanctuary in the midst of them forever. Uh oh, the temple's coming back. You can't say it today. Where is the temple today? There is none. Israel and Judah did not join themselves when Jesus was in the temple. So it hasn't happened yet. There's a dumb of the rock right now. But that's not the Jewish temple. That's where some baloney angel or something is sending it into heaven. I don't know. Something like that. Bowl cuts. My tabernacle also shall be with them. Who's God's tabernacle? Who, who took on the, the nature of man, the body of flesh? Jesus Christ. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. There is a temple, and there is the Lord Jesus Christ outside the temple. And so what did he say? What about the temple? Destroy this temple in three days. I'll rise it up. Oh, he said he was going to destroy the temple, the building, and all that. No, he did not say that. But he called himself that temple. My tabernacle also shall be with them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. How more clearer can you get? And the heathen. That's not the church. We're not heathen shall know that I am the Lord, do sanctify Israel. All those Gentiles that do help the Jews unknowingly, Matthew 25, that get to go in, into the millennium, are going to know that that is God. And those Jews are the, are the people of God, because the land that's been fought over for years after years after years after years is only given to one people, the Jews. When I sanctify, I, wait a minute, ugh. and I, the Lord, do sanctify Israel, when my sanctuary shall be in the midst of them forever. The Lord Jesus Christ. And look how it ends. I'm going to place myself in the midst of Israel, in the midst of their land, and just leave it like that and go off into eternity. You know, when the prodigal son came back, the father gave him clothes, he gave him shoes, he gave him a ring, and he threw a party, and the party never ended, did it? It never said that, you know, they closed up, went to bed, and, and uh, the servants came and cleaned up everything. No, that, the party still went on. The fellowship still went. 